House 282 Sales and Use Tax Diapers Exemption is on third reading and final passage. Madam Speaker. Is there any debate? Recognizing the general lady from Carroll. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Colleagues, this is a great bill as well. I have supported this bill in the past. In fact, uh, our minority leader who just spoke a few moments ago had this bill in 2019. I'm happy to support it again this year. The total of the proposed tax cuts, as we have reiterated several times, and I think if something is this important, we should keep talking about it, amounts to 2%. Actually, I guess that number should be revised since we now heard the $6 billion number. Billion. Inflation has risen 7.5% in the past year, the highest in 40 years. Gas, gasoline, we all need. Gas is up 42.2%. Just last night, I filled my car up. I paid $4 a gallon in tax. In, in gas tax, I mean in gas cost. Four dollars. And that's going to keep going up. Food is up 9.1 percent. Energy, 26.1 percent. Used cars are up 38 percent. On the bill. On the bill. These are basic needs. These are not luxury items. So while I appreciate this measure, and I absolutely will be supporting it, just to reiterate what we've been speaking about, we should be giving all of Maryland families relief to their, their budgets and to our small businesses with a six billion dollar surplus now is the time thank you madam speaker madam speaker recognizing gentleman from st mary thank you madam speaker i rise to support this legislation this super awesome bill i'm looking at the fiscal net in here and it's a little bit of an anomaly because, you know, I often thought that the fiscal notes could probably have like a consumer impact because I'm looking at the state effect and the state effect is actually bracketed, meaning it's a decrease. So I'm assuming that our consumers in this piece of legislation will be saving seven and a half million dollars. And that's unusual because normally you only see these decreases in election years. Everything normally goes up in the House of Delegates. And I'm supporting this bill because I have the same opinion that economist Milton Freeman has. I'll take a tax cut for any reason, any excuse, any under, under any circumstance, whenever possible. Because I know that the money is better off being spent with our citizens. They spend it more efficiently than anything the government could possibly do. We have a $4.6 billion surplus. It's pretty obvious that we're taxing our citizens too much. And I do support this legislation, but it does seem to be a little bit like an election year gimmick. That $4.6 billion surplus, how, how do we get that? Well, we got that on the back of 43 tax increases by the last administration. We got that $4.6 billion surplus from a gas tax that has gone up automatically with nobody voting on it for the last 10 years. We got that surplus from, let's face it, congressional Republicans known as the Trump tax cuts, cutting taxes for, across, for everyone across the United States, but in the General Assembly, we didn't pass those taxes on to our citizens, resulting in a billion dollar increase per year to the General Assembly. That's the state effect. And last year, we overrode a veto of the governor expanding the digital download tax for a tune of $120 million. Now, to put this in context, this $7.5 million, I'm gladly going to vote for it. And I know this is on our package to bills, but per that fiscal note, it's about $18.5 million. And to put that in context, Madam Speaker, last year, the General Assembly passed a $65 million tax credit for people that are here that are non-citizens. I know that we have meaningful tax cut legislation sitting in ways and means that was pushed forth by the minority party, by the governor, tax cuts that will cut gas, 
gasoline tax cuts that would relieve the relief on of, the bill it's on the bill because it's in context of the bill madam speaker because we on have on the bill it's a third reader argument it is on the bill because i'm putting it in context because we have legislation sitting in the drawer of ways and means that would make it easier for our citizens our retirees easier for middle income marylanders to lower their cost of living and provide some meaningful relief and I just hope in the next two weeks before crossover, three, four weeks before the end of session, that we can bring that legislation out in a bipartisan manner in an election year, and we can all enjoy that and put some tax relief to our citizens. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Is there and any I further a green debate? Vote. Any yes. further debate? Madam Speaker. Gentleman from Kemp. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, just a point of order. Um, in third reader, we have wide... Uh, latitude to debate a bill and i think that's important um for the purposes of you know the free speech provided you're on what the bill is but the third reader allows wide latitude for debate i'm just saying that that's what the rule book says so having said Are that you madam parliamentarian speaker, having said that madam speaker i'm going to support this bill ladies and gentlemen because i actually believe that all life matters it matters at the beginning, and it matters at the end. And as a father, and as a recent very proud grandfather, I think it's great that we want to incentivize, to the extent that we can, people to raise children and raise families. But I also think it's interesting that we have this bill on the House floor right around the time when we're seeing another bill that's going to go into the General Assembly, which provides for abortion on demand at any time in the Maryland State Constitution. I'm sorry, they don't jive, these two bills. So yes, I believe all life matters, and I'm going to support this bill for that reason. And bring up the fact that it's highly inconsistent that we're saying on the one hand, you can abort a child up until and including the time of birth Madam by Speaker, putting in the Constitution. On the bill, on the bill please. He's on out of order. the bill. Yes, including in the Constitution and at the same time say that we are going to give parents the right to not pay the sales tax on diapers. There is a connection. There is it and everybody knows it is. It's no coincidence that this bill is before us now considering what is about to happen in this legislature. So yes, I support this bill. I wish we had wider tax relief in the state, but we don't. And for all those reasons, Madam Speaker, I look forward to raising this issue again in debates to come. Thank you. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Recognizing parliamentarian. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Happy Friday, colleagues. Good morning. Good, morning. Good to see everyone. Uh, we've been having excellent, great debate from the minority party, from the majority party this week. Um, I just want to remind everyone, um, for the sake of us maintaining collegiality, for the efficiency of our business, let's try not to question each other's motives. Each of us is here doing the best to represent our districts and our communities. Um, so let's be careful about question, questioning each other's motives and impugning each other in terms of our motivations for why we're bringing legislation. And as a reminder as well, we do need to stay on the bill. Third reader does have broader debate, but it needs to be on the bill that we're discussing. Thank you, everyone. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Rec recognizing the general lady from Baltimore City. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, you know, I'd like to break the mold a bit. We've heard a lot from our friends across the aisle about some of the tax cuts we've been passing this week. And a lot of what we hear is, I like this bill, but I'm just going to say, I love this bill. And I am excited to vote for this bill because Maryland parents need it. We have seen over the last two years, many of us, I'm looking around the room, we have seen so many parents wait in lines in their cars for hours for boxes of food, for undergarments, for clothes, and for diapers. 
right? Whether you're with the student support network or the up county hub or any place in the city or anywhere all over the state, so many of us have participated to get these items to our constituents. And today, we are just saying we support you. We want to make it a little bit easier because too many people, those pennies matter. That dollar you might save on a box of size three T diapers, right? They really matter. So I'm rising not to say I like this bill, but, but to say I am enthusiastically supporting this bill for every parent in Maryland who has ever or ever will change a diaper. Thank you. Is there any further debate? If not, the clerk will call the roll. Madam Speaker. Has everyone recorded their vote? Does anyone care to change your vote? If not, the clerk will take the call. There being 129 votes in the affirmative, House Bill 282 have received a constitutional majority is declared passed. Clerk, read the next bill. House Bill 375, Open Meetings Act, Application and Enhanced Requirements.